Hey guys, it's Bobby Legs and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. And today we're going to do a little Monday night chat uh, focusing on German watches uh, or German heritage Swiss made watches as well. And uh, of course, I'm joined as always on Monday nights with our in-house enthusiast, uh, Ryan. Ryan, how are you doing today and what are you wearing? Doing well, Rob. Thanks. And uh, back on wrist is my big pilot seems to uh have a hard time taking it off actually yeah well that's it that's a that's a beauty uh i'm still wearing my uh, my tudor uh black bay 58 i as you know same problem yeah same problem exactly um and then we'll get into the watch that i was hoping to uh show off today but it's coming in tomorrow in the mail um but uh you know Guys, Ryan and I have been talking about German watches for a while now, maybe almost close to a year. And Ryan is one of uh, the people who was uh, most responsible for me to, um, you know, getting turned on to German watches and appreciating uh, the craftsmanship of German watches. Uh, also, um, there's, a, there's a channel of Bill Sanders, uh, Art Watch Sci, uh, where he, um, in several videos, um, really got into uh, German watchmaking and turned me on to some other brands, a lot of uh, handmade brands that uh, that I never even heard of. And and, and I think uh, Ryan would admit to this too, there's a, probably a lot of other smaller German uh, brands that we just we just don't know of yet, you know, because, um, you know, there's just so many of them. Um, but Ryan, before we get into that and getting into some of our, uh, the, the typical German brands that are, that are popular today, uh, how did you get into, uh, German, uh, watches and, and, and or German heritage Swiss watches or, and, and what, what kind of watches do you have in your, um, in your collection that are, that are German influenced? So back before the days of Facebook, um, I would spend my time in when I would get a coffee or if I was a deposition or I was traveling, uh, I'd go to a Barnes and Noble and I'd have the bookstores attached and I'd be able to, to look at these magazines because that was pretty much the predominant way for uh, finding watches is either going and getting catalogs at a store, talking to a dealer or viewing these magazines. And there are beautiful publications that were rather pricey, but I would spend my time um, reading these magazines, and there were some minimal sites, um, and I had already purchased now my Breitling at that point, and uh, just this is probably 2003, 2004 time frame, and I started to look at the watches, and and really what stood out were two it was the Schutte and A Lang Ason, and uh, I think what really did it for me was the date. So before we go further, I just wanted to show this was the. Um, my uh, Glashuta original that I purchased, that my wife purchased for me in about 2009. Um, and if you look, I don't know how great it is on here, this view, but one of the things that really stood out is the date window. Um, this is probably, I'm not going to say it's the only watch company that does it, but it has two windows for the numerals. And instead of just being on one fixed dial, where it just rotates per day, there's actually two numbers, uh, beautiful symmetry, and they will flip kind of like the old school uh, digital, that, well, not digital clocks, but the yeah. old alarm clocks. The alarm clocks, sure. The, I love, I've and, been looking for one of those on eBay. So. <laughs> and um, that was one of the uh, attributes of the watch. But also, if you look, one of the things that's very typical of a German watch is symmetry and proportions of it the dial they usually have a very clean aesthetic but i remember being drawn to it uh and before i really knew anything about the notion of a bauhaus dial or um the, how they design their watches uh that just stood out to me and i probably was a line the song was just beautiful and um i would see a lot of the pictures obviously way out of the price range especially back then but um and which is interesting because I'm generally not a dress watch guy, but there was something about the aesthetic of the dial that just drew me into the watch in and of itself. And um, I think once I was able to get my hands on my Glashuta, it really took off and I started to uh, see all these other brands at the time too. I remember uh, liking Nomos um, back then, thinking back to the early years, 
I think it was uh, those three were the predominant ones. And then later on, I started to get turned on to Zinn, and uh, which just fits more in line with where I am today. I kind of appreciate something that's uh, more robust to right. watch. Right. Um, you know, it's interesting when you, that that glazut uh, that you have. Um, before we even started talking about watches or German watches, I was, and before I even knew that you had that watch, I was instantly attracted to that watch. I found it, you know, uh, uh, perusing through the internet one day and, and, and I found it and I, and I really was taken by the, um, the lunar uh, scope version. I think it's called the lunar scope or, or whatever it's called. Um, and, and I remember thinking like you, the symmetry was unbelievable. You know, something that's interesting. And I think I've, I remember this correctly, you know, Longa does also that, that, that uh, two disc uh, date window. Um, but what the difference, and I think I'm remembering this correctly, the difference between what Longa does and what Gazuta does and, and Longa and a lot of other brands do, the two discs do not lie on the same plane. The one disc is higher than the other. Glazut's really the only one, or maybe that's changed now, where the discs are both on the same level and plane. And, I, and you can probably verify that uh, by taking a look at it, at your watch. Yeah, uh, they're I, I pretty, think much, I, pretty much level. Um, yeah, I, I think I remember uh, reading about that. And, th and there's some, there was some apparent difficulty in achieving that. So that's not a, a small, small feat. That is something that, you know, at the time, was very um, was very difficult to do, um, and that were kind of steps out. You you, you expect like at a longer, a higher price point, you know, who knows? Maybe the quality, maybe a little bit better. That's arguable, you know. That's debatable. It's debatable, um, but yeah. I definitely uh, agree with that. That the the price point's significantly higher, um, but the other attribute also is the exhibition case back. You get a chance to really see. I don't know. It's probably not going to. Work if you move it, move it over. Yeah, if you move it to, yeah, yeah. yeah the it's straps really hard to see. Straps but I, I, may, I may, if I have the time, I'll pop up a picture. Um, uh, but edit the, one in, but yeah. The finishing, the finishing is absolutely exquisite. And, you know, I, there's lots of exhibition case back watches and there's no shortage of that. I mean, I've, I've even seen it in uh, lots of Seikos too. Yeah, and sure. On a, they're very unadorned. Yeah. Uh, but but this is is something else, and uh, almost want to wear it uh, like a reversio. We yeah, yeah. <laughs> have the back on the front because it really is beautiful. I remember when I first got it, I spent a lot of time um, just looking at the back and being mesmerized by it. And, and even still to this day, I, I, in a way, am probably more intrigued by that aspect of the watch. It's um, and it, it's probably I, I hate to say the last dress watch I'll get, but probably the likelihood is I, I don't see myself getting another one um but if that's the case i'm thrilled to have yeah. this one uh it, it just i really don't see it getting much better for pur my purposes uh right. considering the limited amount of time but you know it really is a true work of art i don't i don't really view it as just a watch right um, and you, you know you wear you you were you kind of alluded you, you had said something that 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 um that I, that I, I associate with with a lot of, well a lot of high end watches, but also with a lot of German watches is the finishing, um, the uh, the level of detail that you see in the German watch. Uh, yes, you do see that in some Swiss watches, but I feel like with the German watches watch brands, you see that level of detail and finishing. And over engineering is a very popular word used for German watches. At a lot of their price levels and uh, you know what I mean so you don't necessarily always see that in high end I mean you do see it in high end but you also see it in the mid range and maybe in a lower mid range not, not necessarily the low low range um, but uh, but you see that in a more of, of a bigger gap of pricing you know what I mean like you can get a really I feel like a much more bang to the buck and now you mentioned that you're more that your lifestyle is more nowadays like you know accustomed to like maybe uh, like wearing a Zen watch as opposed to, you know, wearing that glazut because, you know, that is a dress watch and um, it, it was a little bit delicate, right? I mean, I remember you telling me that, that it is a little bit of a delicate watch, um, but with the Zen watches, um, watch brand, you see that level of over-engineering and finishing um, 
that y- you may not see in another price range in another, in a Swiss watch per se. I mean, you might, right? You might, but I feel like there's, it happens more in a German watch. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Absolutely. If you were to compare to just for, you know, for purposes here, the pricing of a Rolex and, you know, it's a great watch and we, we've gone back and forth and we can't yeah. deny that, but um, you don't have as much of the marketing hype for a lot of these German brands that are exquisite um, and, and they're excellent timepieces, but they just don't carry that level of branding significance that most of the general population would pick up on and and as a result the prices are different um, yeah you get a lot you just get a great value is a is in in particular and, and you know in damasco and we could talk more about them but you know you get a lot of watch uh for the money comparative to some of the swiss counterparts um where you get a good watch but you're spending a lot as well and um you're not getting some of the technological advancements that you get i mean you know, the casing alone of the, the Zinn and Damasco, you know, hardened submarine steel. Yeah. Uh, just, at, at, you know, and the price points are, they're creeping up probably over the years, but still very competitive. Um, and, and those are the kind of things that I appreciate, especially now as I get older, you see the over-engineering of the watches, but what are you really paying for? You're paying for right. um, either the branding or, or the... Um, design and and the work that went into making that watch and the thought process. And I I kind of appreciate that probably more so than I might just a brand in and of itself Um, for saying, Hey, look, I got a Swiss timepiece that doesn't necessarily excite me anymore. Right. And, uh, and, 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 and that, the the big shadow that the quote unquote Swiss timepiece casts over some you know german brands or some other maybe um uh brands maybe is japanese brands whatever um in a way kind of helps us out as as buyers and collectors because like you said you know we can argue that you get way more bang for a buck uh on a german watch especially in that mid-level range than their counterpart in a swiss level level and 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 you're basically paying just to say swiss made on that dial you know, um, and it's amazing how that reputation, I mean, that's generations of, uh, you know, people have been following that, you know what I mean? Like the Swiss made, I have a Swiss made watch. It could be like the crappiest Swiss made watch. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's Swiss plenty made. of them. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's plenty there's, of them. Sure. There's probably way too many of them. Um, and you know, it just doesn't really interest me as a, I don't really necessarily consider myself a collector. I know it's off topic, but I consider myself like an enthusiast hobbyist. And the reason I say that is it's hard for me to just own too many watches because it causes stress for me. It's expensive. Right. And then I don't wear them. Right. Um, so I don't necessarily want to just own for the sake of owning and have right. like Jay Leno's garage right. Uh, right. of watches. So, right. you know, I try and pick things based upon something that really intrigues me and that I know that I, you know, I, I'm the kind of person that if it if it clicks with me, I know in my heart right away. I don't need to research for 9,000 years. I know. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that brought me back into the hobby was actually the Fliegers. Yeah. Um, after I know I said I had a long hiatus from watches and about a couple of years ago, I picked up a, a Laco and it was a inexpensive one at the time. I just, just wanted something to throw on a NATO, quite frankly, and it came on a NATO, but I bought it used. And, uh, and then I started to really get back into researching the, uh, the concept of, of the, uh, the German World War II watches. And, you know, despite who uh, was technically the uh, individual responsible for, uh, I guess, requesting the design, uh, we'll put that aside, um, but we don't need to discuss the, the German Air Force, but the watches they design, are, I am absolutely in love with them. And right. um, once again, it was a, a very clean aesthetic and, and it was just a perfect dial. The, the sterile dial, extremely legible. Uh, it had a true purpose. Not everything you need, nothing you don't. Anti-magnetic cases, just really. And, and you know, you look back to when it was designed and, you know, really brilliant um, piece of um, equipment yeah. for the time and, and even for today. And uh, so now I have 
you know, my, my quartz version, but I know that I'm going to have to replace it with uh, a <laughs> more genuine article. Right. Uh, and I, you know, I, I will. Um, yeah. and, and you look at the price point though, and again, very, very reasonable, yeah. you know, um, whether I got a hand wound or, or even a, just an automatic ETA, yeah. the pricing is extremely fair. Um, the, you know, the only downside to these watches is in water resistance, but they're fleegers. So right. as they say, exactly. if you're in the water, yeah. you know, you got <laughs> yeah. bigger issues. Yeah. Um, you know, so I want to gear, um, steer the conversation to, um, you know, um, some of these, uh, some of these brands that are out there, these German brands that maybe most of us, um, do not have access to on, on a daily, you know, um, not that you can go to, uh, a Neiman Marcus or, you know, if, you know, a department store and you can find these watches. Um, and, um, and so, you know, I just want to preface, you know, um, for who's watching this, you know, I'm, I'm certainly no German watch expert. You know, I, I like the German watches. I'm learning uh, more about them. And there's plenty of brands out there at German brands that, that I'll probably will, you know, I, I don't know about. And hopefully in research, I'll, I'll, I'll find them out. But one great resource that I know Ryan and I use, you know, we, we went to um, the watch buys, which is arguably, I mean, maybe the biggest uh, or, or have the biggest presence in uh, German watches, biggest AD, online AD, I think maybe uh, on uh, in the United States. I mean, I could be wrong. But anyway, they have a huge presence there, the, uh, the Zen AD, uh, quote unquote, for, for the US and a bunch of other watches. And they do roadshows, right? And so, which is very smart of them. They're based out of North Carolina. And they did a roadshow last year, in, at the end of last year in Manhattan. And Ryan and I, uh, you know, met up and we went there. And so, like, I knew I already liked German watches. And I, and I, had, this, I had a Zin 856 last year, but because of some, you know, quality control issues, I had to send it back and, and I ended up getting my money back. But I knew I was going to get this watch back. And I'm, you know, I alluded to in the beginning of, the, uh, of this episode that, you know, I was hoping that I rebought it and, and, I, and I was hoping to have it today, but I'll have it tomorrow. Um, so I, I already knew that the passion for the German watches um, was 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 there, and then and then we and then we saw them, right? I mean, and then you know Ryan and I we, we got to we got to hold them, you know what I mean? And like, you know, I know you know you were gravitating towards Zen. You, there was a couple of Zen that you had your eye on. Um, there were a couple other um, brands that I was gravitating to, uh, uh, Dornbluth and, and Zahn and, and Kodiki, I think is the, that's the name of it. Um, these handmade watches. Um, but Ryan, tell, tell me, tell me about your experience there. Like, you know, um, did it, did you, after seeing these watches and these other brands, you know, what, what did you think? I mean, did, did, did it kind of just, you know, your, 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 your thirst for German brands, did it, did it, did it, did it you know, uh, pique your interest uh, you know, did you want uh, more? Absolutely. Um, first of all, just to have the ability to try on that many Zen watches at one time, because no one has them. I mean, back in the day, I remember I would be able to see a few random watches at the Short Hills Mall. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a nice high-end place in New Jersey, but uh, I think they probably were just pre-owned, but at the, I just can't recall it's going back too far. But, you know, you really don't see them, and now you really don't see them because there's one authorized dealer and they're online. So um, having the ability to try on, I think some of the – I think uh, one thing that blew me away was the U1, the um, the bezel on that. You just you couldn't scratch it. They gave me this uh, super sharp tool. I remember that. Yeah. You know, I, I just sat there chipping away, and I just couldn't uh, couldn't do anything to it. And then, you know, just the craftsmanship of the watch. When it, I think the the U1 that I tried on, I really was surprised. I didn't think I was going to like it. Actually, I used to hate that watch, and now mm. I love it. And the other watch that um, really blew me away was the 556, which is, yeah. you know, really entry level. Um, but, you know, something about the... the Highly uh, legible, the way, right? I mean, yeah, it's a beautiful. So, I mean, I ended up, you know, I didn't get it that day. I planned on buying it. And lo and behold, I ended up with an IWC <laughs> Big Pilots. I really can't argue, but it was, yeah. it was my intention to go home and buy that 556. But I still yeah. haven't forgotten about it. And some of the things that, you know, it's just the util, there's a utilitarian nature to these watches. Um, but I think it's the simple beauty of them that draw me in so much. And I think that's typical of a lot of the German watches, Nomos in particular, 
there's a just great simplicity to it and that's where the beauty lies and it's you know you could just put any plain dial with a stick and you know applied indices and it's not going to look good there's endless endless uh out there but it's, it's a symmetry and a balance and they are they've perfected it i think yeah um and 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 but you know seeing the dornbluth i was really shocked because i had not known of them previously right and uh you said you were into them and i, I was just shocked at the price points for these absolutely beautiful handmade watches and unbelievable and right you raised a good point because you know to to get that level of watch um you have to spend triple the price uh right Right. Uh, right. Minimum. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I really was um, just pleased as well to know. Yeah. And it, it kind of just solidified my love of the German watches because of that. You know, I, I think I've gotten a little bored in many ways of most, a lot of the Swiss watches. And it's not not a bad thing. It's just, I've been, looking at, them for, I've been looking at it for so long. Right. And, you know, you, after a while, you just, you see something different. And I guess that's the beauty of the hobby anyway, is that everyone likes something different. Yeah. Uh, if we all like the same thing, it would be kind of boring. Um, it's almost, it's almost like, um, you know, going, and you're absolutely right about that, you know? Um, but going back to some of these like obscure German brands, it's almost fortunate for us, right? We're kind of like in the, in the right, the planets are aligning in, in, in a way that these watches are great. They're handmade. The Swiss equivalent is probably several times more, but they're not known here in the States, you know? And so, yeah, unfortunately, there's only one place you can get it here in the States. I mean, I'm sure, um, you know, if, if, you, if you have the, um, the gumption to, 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 to go on Corona 24 and buy, uh, buy something from an AD um, from another continent, uh, more power to you. I kind of like the fact that, um, you know, some of these guys are here. So like, if I had to knock on their door one day, you know, uh, I could knock on their door one day, but I mean, it, it's, a, but it's also unfortunate that like, you know, there's only one Avenue here in the States and that's watch buy, and they're great. Watch buys are great. But I um, will say they, you know, one nice thing uh, about watch buys, they, they are responsive. So I actually yeah. emailed some questions about the movements and they, they got right back to me. So, and you know, I've seen, uh, I'm so far from the reviews and we met the owners and they're great guys. So I'm pretty confident that they yeah. would be excellent. And even your experience. Yeah. Great. My experience was great with them. Um, but what I'm getting at is that, um, you know, with some of these prices, um, especially the Dornbluth, um, they're, they're really at a, a nice little sweet spot here. And if you had, if you had somewhere between $4,000, right. Cause that's, you know, we're a lot of their, their, um, entry level, uh, and, and, and I'm, and I'm doing them a disservice by calling them entry level. They're not entry level, but, but for them, they're entry level. Um, you can get such a fantastic, um, handmade or mostly handmade watch, you know, and, um, and they're still flying under the radar. Now that Kadinki, that Kadiki, I, I, I hope I'm saying that name right. Um, he had, he had a watch, he's a watchmaker, Stefan Kadiki. Um, and, um, and that watch, the one watch, uh, Kadiki one or Kadiki two, I forget the name of it, but it has like a day night indicator that won um, some uh, award in the, in the Grand Prix de la Regie. And, and now that price of that watch, that, that watch is maybe like seven grand a couple of years ago. That watch is like creeping up closer to, to nine, 10 grand, I believe, you know, last time I checked, uh, I think I had those numbers, right? So even like that little bit of notoriety though, is is really jacking up the prices on some of these German handmade watches. So, like, if you can, if if you if you have the the love for the watch and and the cash now, like, I think like buying like a Dornbluth and Zahn right now, um, and if you want that hand wind um, experience, uh, hand handmade, I'm sorry, um, like now is the time because it's only a matter of time before I think Dornbluth blows up a little bit, you know, and their prices start going up. Well, that's the uh, interesting thing about, you know, the, uh, the way of the world now with these basically free groups that they're able to market in, um, yeah. whether not, not even intentionally, but you got guys like us who are just basically pumping their products um, through, through the groups on Facebook. I mean, and, and you know, I, that's how I'm learning about some of them. Like I just, uh, Maurice Grossman, be yeah. absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, 
I can't really there in a, a league that's so far above what most uh, Swiss watches could ever strive to be. Um, you know, I hope to get a chance to, to see that in person yeah. um, and to try it on. They, they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, and you don't hear much about them. Granted, they're not inexpensive, but for what you're getting, um, probably well worth it to a collector yeah. anyway. You know, yeah. if, if you if you only want to watch that simply, hey, uh, look what I have on my wrist, then, you know, everyone's going to get a Rolex. Right. Um, right. But, you know, there's not a whole lot of appeal, I guess, for me. If, if you're really a someone who's intrigued by the process, you're not going to get, first of all, in a Rolex, you're, you're not going to have an exhibition case back and, and the movement's not going to be finished to that level and you're never going to see it unless you open right. up the back and you certainly wouldn't want to do that. So it's a different different watch for a different kind of uh, collector, I guess. But um, yeah, I, I but there's even, even at the lower levels uh, of a more utilitarian function, there's just so many out there. And, you know, the, besides Glishut, the original, there's Eula Glishut. Yeah. Um, Right. I, I've seen so many great watches in the past couple of years. The, uh, I think it was the GMT. I'm forgetting the name now. It's it's got a blue bi-directional bezel. It's it's beautiful. Um, right. I just can't think of the name. I really and I, I see them come up for sale and people have them and I've, right. you know, want, thought about it several times. Um, and even, but even even like um, more affordable, like like you mentioned, Laco and, and Stova and 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 all those other you know um, Fliegeresque type uh watch companies you know i mean the quality is there you know what i mean and and you know what and i think ryan i think maybe like right now would be a good time to to table this discussion sure. um and uh and then do a part two on, on another day um because we did leave out a lot of brands and i feel like that could be Absolutely. another another 15 minute discussion so uh, easily um, so easily yeah absolutely so guys tell us what you think are there some German brands out there that you want us uh, to discuss next time uh, or, or bring up to us? Like, like, like I said before, you know, Ryan, I don't think, and I'm going to speak for Ryan here and he can correct me, but I don't think we're necessarily German watch experts. We just have a, a fondness for them and, and we love learning about them and, and learning about new brands and, and, and handmade uh, watches, German watches. So um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. And, um, and thanks for joining us and, um, we'll see you with uh, another part to, uh, German watches, uh, as a, as a, as a Monday night topic, Ryan, good night and everybody else. Good night. Take Take care. care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.